each lesson, we're kind of adding in another factor to our calculation. So we started out where we looked at rate versus concentration with our differential rate laws. And then we brought in the factor of time versus concentration with our integrated rate laws. And what we're going to look at now is bringing in the temperature and our orientation. Because if you think back, we talked about our collision model and they have to collide, collide with sufficient energy and they have to have proper orientation. So, so this last calculational thing is going to, is going to kind of bring in the temperature and our um, orientation. The one thing to remember about the rate constant, and I know I've had several people ask me questions, well, okay, in this problem, why is it giving me temperature? Um, do I have to use temperature? Well, typically no, but the rate constant is temperature dependent. So as long as you are performing the same reaction at the same temperature, you're going to use the same rate constant. But if you change the temperature, that is the one thing that will change the rate constant. Um, so kind of keep that in mind as we're working through here. But we're going to talk a little bit about the theory. And then we're also, we're going to be using some problems that are in a file that's called Arrhenius Made Easy. Um, in that file, um, it has multiple pages where it talks to you again about kind of the Arrhenius equation. And it also, um, those of you that are going to be using TI-84s, it also steps you through how to do the Arrhenius calculations um, with the TI-84s. Okay, so let's, we're going to go in here and take a kind of a look here. So here we are, and this is just kind of some little visuals here. So here it's talking about um, with the, the effect of temperature, and here if it's less than the, the minimum amount of temperature in part B, we don't get a reaction to form products. They just kind of bounce off of each other. And then going back to our, whoops, oh, sorry about that. Going back um, to our energy diagrams, remember we had those, um, that, so this minimum energy, all right, say it's, we'll just do an example of an exothermic. And so remember that it's that minimum energy is the energy difference between where the reactants are and where the top of the hill, which is our activated complex. And so this here is E sub A or activation energy, kind of what in this diagram they're referring to as E min, E minimum on there. Now, in looking at this, we haven't looked at these graphs before, but one thing to note about these, this is a graph and it's looking at the fraction of molecules and then what their specific kinetic energy is. So if you remember when we talked about the relationship between the kinetic energy of molecules and the absolute temperature, remember we said that the, the absolute or Kelvin temperature was directly proportional to the average kinetic energy. And so remember that it's proportional to the average. So not all the molecules, um, if the substance is at a given temperature, not all the molecules are going to have the same exact kinetic energy. And then one thing also to note, and this is just doing a plot of the fraction of um, molecules that if they collided would result in, uh, in a reaction going forward. And the thing to note here is that kind of look at the distribution of the kinetic energies at low temperature versus a high temperature. And what you should see is that as we increase the temperature, that the distribution of the kinetic energies actually broadens out. So at lower temperatures, we have a much narrower peak, like right here, okay? And so we have a smaller range of kinetic energies, whereas at a higher temperature, let me just put up here, oops, that is not a highlighter. Let's go back up here. There we go. So here, when we get to a higher temperature, see how that we get a wider distribution of kinetic energies. 
And then the other thing to note is that, which is kind of the purpose of this graph, I'm just sort of pointing out some other things, is that if this is our activation energy, what we'll see is we get all of this, a lot more of my particles would be capable of having a collision that would have enough energy for the reaction to go forward. The frequency factor that is involved in the Arrhenius equation, that is basically, if you looked at the three-dimensional region, the volume around a molecule, and you took what fraction of that volume um, that another reactant molecule could approach in that would result in a proper orientation for a successful collision, um, that's kind of what it's looking at. So that's sort of the way to think of it. It's looking at um, what is the proportion of the ways that another molecule could approach that reactant molecule um, that would result in proper orientation for a successful collision. All right, at this point, um, even though there are some additional uh, problems in your notes, and we'll come back to those, but I want to switch over to the Arrhenius Made Easy document um, just to kind of show you what's in there, and then also because I like the problems that are in um, that document. So we're going to just pop over here. I'm going to look at the Adobe file first, and then we'll go and look at um, kind of the, the equations that, that they give us in there. So if you go down to about uh, page number three, you'll see that it's giving us the Arrhenius equation, um, and this is in a y equals mx plus b format. Um, so let's, let me switch back over to my OneNote so we can um, look at that. Okay, so in this yx, y equals mx plus b format, um, what we want to do is go back to draw get my pen. There we go. So remember, we, we're dealing with a lot of graphs in this kinetics um, chapter. And what we want to see here is that in this format, we have, we're plotting the natural log of the rate constant versus one over the Kelvin temperature. And what, what Arrhenius says is that when I plot natural log of the rate constant versus one over the temperature, then I get a line, it's a linear relationship, where the slope of that is equal to the negative activation energy divided by R. Now, this R is the energy version of R. So this R is our 8.314 value, and that is, I believe, joules per moles Kelvin. Okay, so on that, using that R value, all right, then we can, from our slope of our graph data, we can find the activation energy for the reaction. Okay, the other thing is that the, if it ever asks for frequency factor, that the y-intercept is the natural log of the frequency factor of this line. So we can get the frequency factor if we need it. Now, you will have some problems where maybe they give you um, just two points and ask you questions about it, or they'll give you um, one rate constant temperature combination and maybe give you the activation energy and ask you to find what the rate constant would be at another temperature. Um, this is a really handy form of the equation. I'm not going to go into the algebra to um, derive it, but it's not that hard to derive if you want to try that yourself. Um, but this is an algebraic equation. Um, good to know. 
on there, it's not on the formula sheet. Okay, so, but this will help you um, in uh, doing some of the problems, especially um, some of the quest problems. Okay, so let's move on then. And now let's look at, let me close that Adobe file so we can get our calculator back. Okay, so what I like about these are, these are some really nice questions um, that, again, we're gonna use our calculator to do our linear regression. So the first thing I'm gonna do here, so I'm gonna go back to my two variable statistics, and we're gonna put, I'm gonna put in there, in C1, I'm gonna put my temperature values. These are Kelvin temperatures. This has to be in Kelvin. So one, 195, and 230, 260, 298, and 369. Let's get rid of that one and that. And so 1.08 EE for the ninth, 2.95 EE for the ninth, um, 5.42 EE to the ninth, 12, and 35.5. Okay, so there's my data. Now, here I'm plotting something different. So I've got to go back in to my symbolic view. I'm only going to do one graph for this. So I'm going to go in and uncheck my S1 and my S2. Okay, then for my independent variable, that's my X. Um, I don't want to plot just the temperature. I want to plot one divided by my C1, okay, so that's, it's gonna be one over the temperature is gonna be in my X, and then my Y is not just C2, but the natural log of C2. Okay, and linear, so I'm gonna hit plot, um, and again, view, auto scale, all right, so there's my graph. I'm gonna go back. And remember, because we haven't done this in a while, but remember guys, if you if it's not showing you a line, ooh, and that's not a very good line for sure on there. Let me take a better look at that. Uh, okay, let me, I gotta go back to number view anyway, but before I do that, okay, right? If you If you're not seeing your plot, the fit tab, you need to have touch that so that it has showing up with the dot. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go back to my symbolic view. I'm gonna double check. So one over the temperature, natural log of that, linear plot. So now I'm gonna go to my number view. I need to check this again. Let me just make sure because 260, 298, 369. Um, oh, there it is. Okay. Ah, I knew that I had this something. Let's try doing this as not to the negative. There we go. Now let's go back to plot. Ah, see, much better. Okay, there we go. Now, all right, so now we're gonna go um, back to my symbolic view and there is my plot and my equation there. So let's, at this point now, let's just start taking a look at some of these questions. So the first thing it asked me, it says, is this reaction fast or slow? Justify your answer. Well, what do we look at to know how fast or slow a reaction is? We look at the rate constant. And if you look at these rate constants, 10 to the ninth, these are huge rate constants. And so is it, fast or slow? And the answer is it is fast. And the reason behind it is that K is, is much, much greater than one. Okay. So that means we have a really, really fast, in this case, 10 to the ninth as a rate constant. That's a very fast. So it wants to know what is the overall 
order of this reaction. Ah, okay. How do we know that? Remember we said that either they tell you what order it is, um, they show you which graph gives you the linear plot when you're dealing with your rate, or your rate and your time, uh, or concentration versus time, um, or they can give you the rate constant with units. So if we look at this, what are my units for my K? It's liter over moles, so that's one over molarity seconds. That is the K units that apply to a second order reaction. Okay, so part C. What is the activation energy for this reaction? So remember that the activation energy um, is related to the slope and that the slope is negative activation energy over R. So my slope, if I look, uh, there, all right? So it is negative one, it's a comma, 1,435.7, and that's equal to negative activation energy over 8.314. So essentially, you take the slope, positive value of the slope times 8.314. So let's go back, let me get back to my function part. And so 1,435.7 times 8.314. And so 11,936 my activation, my activation energy, 11,936, and that will be in joules. Okay, let's look at D now. Here, it's giving, it's wanting the value of K. So K, that's related to our Y date, or our Y axis. And then, right, because Y is the natural log of K, and then it's giving us an X, or well, a value related to our X. It's giving us a temperature, and we know the X is one over the temperature. So here, it's, it's asking us, okay, so if one over 455, that is one over T, which is our X, is gonna be 2.198, times 10 to the negative three. So that's actually the X value that it's giving us. And then we're gonna be asking it, okay, what is the Y value? So this is back, if you remember, we, we did this with the Beer's Law data, same kind of thing. So if you remember, we're gonna go back to, we gotta go and copy our equation. So we're gonna go symbolic view and we're going to, that should be linear, but I don't, we've already plotted it, so it's okay. Um, well, no, I just did away with it. Let me make it plot that again. Okay, now we got it. All right, so we're gonna go to the equation and then I'm gonna use shift view to copy it. Okay, then I'm gonna go back and we're gonna go to the solve app. So solve and then I'm gonna go with it in there, that first position, I'm gonna go shift menu, which will paste. I'm gonna paste that in and say, okay. And then now, remember we go to the number view for this app. Oops, ah, see, look what there. See, I only have the X there. The reason that is, is because here, I didn't put in an, make it in the form of an equation. So remember, we gotta go down to this and make this say, so alpha one, that's Y, and then the equals is the little tab in the middle of the screen there. So now, now I have an equation that has the X and the Y in there. So now when I go to the number view, I have Y and I have X. Okay, so now we're in the number view and I'm gonna put in my 2.198, 10 
to the negative three, say okay. And then now I'm up at my Y, right? Moved up to my Y. And then with that on there, I'm gonna do solve. And so it gives me that my Y, which is equal to the natural log of K, is gonna be 24.915. And so I'm gonna do, go back to my function so I can do some math with this because if the natural log of K is that, then K is going to be E to the 24.915. And so that is going to be um, shift natural log 24.915. And so I'm getting a really large number. So that's uh, one, three, six, nine. So that's going to be 66.1 times 10 to the ninth. All right. Now, kind of a similar question E. What is the temperature when the rate constant has a value of? So here, that's related to our Y. So if the natural log or this is my K, so my Y is going to be the natural log of 22.5 times 10 to the ninth, okay, which is going to be 23.84. So and it says, what is the temperature? So remember my X is one over temperature. So I'm gonna go back into my solve app and my equation is still the same. So I don't need to fix the equation. I just need to go to the number view. And now I'm gonna put in a Y of 23.84 and hit enter. And then I'm, while it's on the X, I'm gonna to touch solve. And so that gives me that my x, which is 1 over t, is equal to 2.947 times 10 to the minus 3, and which means my t is equal to 1 over that. So let me, I'm going to copy that, shift view, go back to my function app, and say shift, I want I want one divided by shift paste that number. And so that gives me that the Kelvin temperature 339.3 is the temperature for that. All right, let's look at number two. So here are data. Now, key thing to notice here is that this temperature is in Celsius. But if you remember, we can take care of that conversion in our symbolic view. So we can still just put the data in. So I'm gonna to run to my two variable statistics. We're gonna put in, so we've got 320. And again, the temperature is independent. So even though in this table, it shows the temperature on the right, that's still our independent variable, which is C1. 340, 360, 380, 400 and then 2.88 10 to the negative fourth make sure that's right Let's, there we go um 4.87 10 to the negative four 7.96 10 to the negative four um, 1.26, 10 to the negative 3, 1.94, 10 to the negative 3. Okay, and so now, all right, so let's look at how we handle this when it's given us our data in Celsius. So we're going to go to the symbolic view, and then here it's going to be 1 over, so 1 divided by, but then I need my C1 to be, and I'm going to do some print, put parentheses here, because I want to do 
So C1, and then I need to add 273, and we're going to do the full 0.15, so we'll give it some more sig figs. So that's what I do, and then that way it's going to convert my Celsius temperatures into Kelvin, and then my Y is still going to be the natural log of C2 in there. Okay, so we're going to go plot make, to get it plot there. And then back to our symbolic view to get our equation. And so, or we'll jump down to, to uh, part B here in just a second. But again, part A, is this reaction fast or slow? Justify your answers. Well, it is slow. And why? Because K is much less than one. So K is very small. This is a very slow reaction. So what is the activation energy? Again, my slope equal to negative Ea over R. So my slope in this case is negative five point, oh, nope, I'm looking at S2. Don't look at S2, look at, sorry about that. Um, okay, so my slope is negative 9.5, is that a comma? Oh, that's a comma, comma, 520.2, okay, and that's equal to negative activation energy over 8.314. So I'm going to take and do, go back here, and so 952, 0.2 times 8.314 and I get activation energy is 79,150.9 again that's going to be in joules and so then what is the value of k when the temperature is so remember k is associated with our y and the temperature is associated with our x because it's one over T. So while I'm here in the function, I'm going to do one divided by my 640. All right, and so that's going to be 0 0.00156. And now I'm already going to, I'm going to think ahead here. So, because down here again, so X one over T and then Y is natural log, like I know I'm going to need these values, so we're going to go ahead and get the k value, so I don't have to keep jumping back and forth in the apps. So 50, or I want natural log of 50.5 e to the negative fourth, and so that's Was minus 5.288. Okay, so now we're ready to go and set up the solver. So we're going to go first, again, two variable statistics, go and get our equation for S1, so shift view to copy. Then I'm going to go to my solver app and I'm going to shift menu to paste that equation in. And then again, I'm going to, whoops, I think I touched the wrong one. Let's try that again. Shift menu. I did. Okay, there we go. So now I've got other stuff down there. So let's go over here, get rid of that accidental paste I did. Oops. And then back, and we're going to make it an equation by doing... Alpha 1 is y equals, and so there's our equation. So now we're going to the number view. And so for C, I'm going to go to my x and put in 0 0.00156, hit enter. Then I'm, while I'm on my y, I'm going to say solve. And so it gives me that my y, which is the natural log of k, is equal to negative 6.0. 953, which means that K 
is going to be e to the negative 6.953. Uh, and so if I jump back to the function, and I'm going to do shift natural log to the negative 6.953 and enter. And that's going to give me that my k is 9.5, 6 times 10 to the minus 4. All right, then we're going back to the solver and the number view. And for part D, for the y value, I'm going to put in negative 5.288. Say OK, and then touch solve. And this is telling me that my x is 1.385 times 10 to the minus 3, which is going to be 1 over the temperature. So my temperature is going to be 1 over that. So go back here. Oops, wait. Let me go back into the solve and number view. And I want to copy that. So shift view. And then apps function and here so now I want to do one divided by and then shift menu so copy that number in and so that gives me a T of 721.9 and that's in Kelvin Okay, so let's go down. Here's our next one. And let's see. So we're going to our two variable statistics. So, um, no, 25. Again, these are in Celsius. So, which we've already got it set up in the symbolic view to take care of that. to there and so 1.74 and 6.61 and 2.51 7.59 whoops let's try that again 7.59 10 to the negative 4 and 2.4, 10 to the negative 3. Okay, and we're going to go symbolic. Again, this is where it's going to um, convert the Celsius temperatures, so we're good to go on that. Do my plot, back to my symbolic view, and I'm going down here. So again, I'm going to jump down here to B, because I know it's asking me for activation energy. So EA, EA over R, so the slope is equal to that. Um, so negative 12,404.16 is equal to negative EA over 8.314 which gives me an activation energy of, let's see, um, 12404.16. So I'm getting 103,128 joules. Um, again, is this reaction fast or slow? For part A, you look at the K. K is much, much less than 1, which is that why it is slow. For now we're going to do work at C and D. And we're going to kind of do it a little bit. Let me get back. Um, and so here we're going to use the solve app. So I'm going to go to my two variable statistics. Go down. We're going to copy. So shift, view, copy, and then now we're going to the solve app, and I'm going to do shift menu to paste, paste that in. Then we're going to go and make it an equation. So we're going to go 
over, we're going to do alpha 1, which is y, and then equals. And then we're going to hit enter. So now I have my equation there. And so now for C, all right, remember it's our, so K, that's related to our what Y is the natural log of K. And then temperature, this is Celsius. So X is one over Kelvin temperature. So one over 373.15, which is gonna be, let's get out to our function and one divided by 373.15. Okay, so um, 0 0.0026, it rounds to about 80. Okay, so if I go back to the solver app, the number view, I'm gonna put in that my X is 0 0.002680, okay? and then tell it to solve for my y. And that gives me, um, so that, that the natural log of k, and let's go over here to the side a little bit. So the natural log k is negative 2.595. So k is gonna be e to the negative 2.595, which is, Let's go back function and shift natural log negative 2.595. And so I'm getting 0 0.07464. And if we look at that, that kind of makes sense because that's a lot bigger than the Ks that are in our data, but the highest temperature in our data is 65, and we were looking at 100 degrees Celsius, okay? All right, so now here is, what is our temperature? Again, that's related to our X. And then when the rate constant has a value, so Y is the natural log of that K, 9.65 times 10 to the minus four. Okay, so that is natural log 9.65, negative 4. Um, so this is a y of negative 6.943 is what I want to plug in. So I go back to apps, solve, and then number, and my y is going to be a negative 6.943. Enter that, tell it to solve for my X. So I'm getting that my X is 3.03 times 10 to the minus three. And that's one over the temperature. So go back to the function app settings. And I'm gonna do one divided by 3.03 10 to the negative three. Enter. So I get a T of 330 and that's in Kelvin. All right, um, question number four is actually a good place to look at the that algebraic equation um, that we had there. Um, or we can we could do it graphically. You would um, plug in, so like for example, you could plug in to do it graphically, I'll, I'll get, just kind of give you the setup and then we're gonna go back and look at that equation. So if our temperatures and versus our uh, rate constants there, so we could have, if the temperature was 250 degrees C and we could say the K was 1500 and at 150 degrees C, it would be one. So you could put that in and do and do it graphically like what we've been doing. Um, or let's just take a look because we haven't used that equation yet. So let's go back to our equation. So here we have the natural log of K2 over K1 is the activation energy over R times one over T1 minus one over T2. So let's come back here to that problem there. Let me rewrite it down here. Natural log of K1 over K2 
equal to EA over R, and then 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Okay, so natural log of, and so we're going to call, we'll call this is uh, K1, so 1500 over 1, we'll just make that our second data point, is equal to the EA over 8.314, and then times 1 over, and again, this is Kelvin temperature, temperature 2 is 150 plus 273. Again, we'll keep in uh, more stick figs, 423.15, and then minus 1 over, and then 323. No, that one was T2 which is 150, so go up one, so 523.15, okay. And so we're gonna take, let's go over here and do our solving a little bit. So the natural log of 1500 is seven, seven point three one three. that's equal to EA, over 8.314, and the number 1 divided by 423.15, and then minus 1 divided by 523.15. That gives me 4.52 times 10 to the negative fourth. I'm going to divide both sides by the 4.52, 10 to the negative fourth. So we have that number divided by that number equals, so I'm getting that 16.1, no, 16,189.3 is equal to EA 8.314, which gives me an activation energy of 134,598, and that would be in joules, okay? So again, you could have done that graphically with just a two-point line, or, and you should get something similar, or you can do it with the algebra equation like what we did. And then, um, again, what is the value of K when the temperature is 100? Okay, so now that we have the activation energy, now we can go in and we can use either one of our uh, of our values. And so if I say um, the natural log of, and then we'll just keep our K1 at 1500 over K2, and then is gonna be um, our activation energy, which was 134.5, 98 over 8.314 and times 1 over my T2, my new one now is 100 degrees Celsius, which is going to be 373.15 and then minus my T1 was 523.15. Okay, and so now this one for some of you, I know your algebra class has not done log rules. So what I want to do is we're going to step over and I'm just going to rewrite this one so that we can work through the algebra for this, okay? So for those of you that know how to solve this, you can skip ahead, but I just wanted to take a minute because I know some of you have said that you hadn't quite gotten to the log rules in there and that that's helpful in solving this. So 1 over 373. 0.15 minus 1 over 523.15. Okay, so now let's simplify this side. So I'm going to have natural log of 1500 over K2, and that's equal. So let's see what we get in here. So I'm going to have in the parentheses 1 divided by 373.15, and then minus. 1 divided by 523.15 and then enter 
and um, then I'm going to be times one, three, four, five, nine, eight, and then divided by 8.314. So on this side of the equation, I'm getting 12.44. Okay, so now we're going to simplify this. We're going to say the, this, the natural log of A over B is equal to the natural log of A minus the natural log of B. So I'm going to have the natural log of 1500 minus the natural log of K2 on this side. Okay. And then, um, then I'm going to do that the natural log of 1500 is 7.31 minus natural log of K2, 12.44. So negative natural log K2 is equal to 12.44 minus 7.31. So I'm getting 5.13. So K2 is going to be E to the negative 5.13 which is equal to so shift natural log negative 5.13 and so i get 5.9 times 10 to the negative third okay um let's see Let's look at, all right, in number five, okay, this one is kind of a review one. If we look at that, it's giving us some data points. And so first off, it wants the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Hopefully you remember this from when we did this in the reaction lab. H2O2 is gonna give me, I got water and oxygen. And so let's see, we need to balance that. I'm going to need a two there, and which means I'm going to need a two there. Okay, and then it says label a reaction coordinate diagram. So remember here we had energy. Those are going to be energy on that side. And then reaction path, whichever, however you want to refer to that, is going to be there. And so this says... Um, our, uh, reduces the reaction, so it's giving me um, our activation energy for uncatalyzed and catalyzed, and our total delta E is negative, negative, remember, negative delta E is it's exothermic, so I'm going to, let's just draw, all right, I'm going to do this here, all right, so I'm going to put, I'm going to say, even though it's no, I'm going to say that's zero, so that means that the uh, reactant energy is at 204, okay? And it says my activation energy for the catalyzed, so my, this value here is 72 if it's without a catalyst. So which means that the top of that hill is 204 plus 72, which would be 276. And then change colors to do the, with the catalyst. So then it says with the catalyst, the activation energy is only, and so that little value there, we'll pull it out here, is uh, 28. So that means that the peak value there would be 232 for the top of the hill with the catalyst. So then it says, well, what is the activation energy of the uncatalyzed reverse reaction? So products, let's change colors again, products up to the top of the uncatalyzed hill was 276. And then for the catalyzed, right, we said that was 232. And that's just because I set my products to zero when I was drawing this. Okay, so for this number six, this is a nice review because we haven't done any Beer's Law for a while. 
So let's kind of take a look at what, what the difference is. Even though we're, from calculational standpoint, we're kind of doing the same thing. So here, remember our Beer's Law plot is a plot of absorbance, let's call that A, versus concentration. Okay, and it has a linear relationship, as you remember, and so we're going to work with the two data points that I have, right? It's, I've only got two of these points in here where I have all of the information that I needed. So this one, these guys here, and so I'm going to go ahead and put those in there. And I'm going to put them all in because we're eventually going to use, um, I think all of them. I don't know. Well, no, let's just do it one at a time. Okay. So we're going to apps, two variables, variable statistics. And here I'm going to do my X is my concentration. So 6.25, 10 to the negative fifth. And five, 10 to the negative fifth. And then the rest of this I gotta get rid of. And then come up here and my absorbance, I have 0.172 and 0.138. All right, so it says calculate the initial concentration of the colored species. So first off, I'm gonna do my plot. So I gotta go to my symbolic view. And here I'm just plotting my um, my concentration, which is C1. So alpha C1, and I'm plotting my um, absorbance on my Y, which is in C2. So alpha C2. Okay. And so great, so we're gonna tell it to plot and we're gonna come back there and it wants the initial concentration, let's get my pen back here. Right, concentration is, that's my X and of the colored species. So initial would be this one right here at time zero. So this is when y, my absorbance, is 0 0.330. It wants to know what is my x. So remember, we're going to copy my equation. So shift, copy, go to my solver app, and we're going to shift, paste, shift menu, paste, and we're going to make that into, we're going to do y, Shift one. Oh, am I not on there? Go down here. Oh, so I thought I was there. So alpha y and then equals. There's my equation. I'm going to the number view. In the y, I'm going to put in 0 0.330. And then I'm going to solve for my x. So my concentration. The initial concentration, 1.206 times 10 to the minus 4. So that would be that would be the value that goes where that question mark is there. And it says, use the data given for concentration and time to determine the order of the reaction. All right, so now I'm going back to two variable statistics and going to the, so I already have, my concentration versus time, and I can actually put in, I've now got a third value, so let's just, we'll make it good, we'll make a better graph, so 0.0610, E negative four in there, and then that is at, that's when we said our absorbance was 0.33, and then now, all right, I haven't plugged in my time yet, so in, I'm gonna put my time Let's just keep track of this, all right? C1 is where I put my concentration. 
C2 is where I have my absorbent, and now in C3 is where I'm going to put my time. This is always a good idea when we're mixing data like this. So I have, um, let's see, that one goes with time of 10. This one went with a time of 15, and this one was my zero time there. Um, so let's go symbolic. And now what I want to do, right, is we're going to do, I need to do my three plots to determine the order. And I want to plot, so C3 is my time. That, so that's going to be my X. And then C1 is my concentration. So that's going to be my Y that I'm going to do the three three plots to figure out what order it is. So remember we did, so C3 in all three of my plots, so alpha C3, enter that there. Let's just go down and fix all of them now. Alpha C3, enter. And then S3, because remember I have to do three plots. So alpha C3, okay. So that's my time that's in there. Fix that to linear. And then now for my first plot, my concentration is in C1. So I'm going to do straight concentration versus time. That's to check for zero order. And then this is going to be um, uh, time versus natural log of concentration. So natural log concentration that here is in C3. And then Go down here and I'm checking for um, time versus one over concentration. So one divided by C1, enter. Okay, so now we're going to tell it to plot. Whoops, uh oh, something didn't, what did it not? So C3, C1, C3, natural log of C3. C3, 1 over C1. Oh, oh, there it was. That should be natural log of C1, because that's where my concentration is. There we go. I think that's what it looked like. So there's my weird plot. But again, we're going to go back to our numbers view and stats. Go down to our R squared, and in looking at these, the S3. So this is second order because the most linear plot was the um, time versus one over concentration. And so now we're going to go to get our rate constant. We're going to go back to symbolic view. And it was the second order plot. So I'm going down there. And so in the second order plot, so K is the positive value of the slope. So 779. 0.15, and then units, it's second order, so m to the minus 1, s to the minus 1. Oh, no, minutes, sorry, that's in minutes. Minutes to the minus 1. And then here it says if we wanted to calculate the number of minutes it takes for the absorbance, for part D, we want, we're going to look, we want the absorbance to drop from 0 0.330 to 0 0.096. Well, 0 0.330 we said that was a concentration of 1.26 206 times 10 to the minus 4. And then 0 0.096, it says, is 3.5 times 10 to the minus 5th. So we've got 1 over um, 3 point. And that's okay with 779, 0.15, and then times solving for time, and then plus 1 over, and our A naught um, was our 1, 1.206 times 10 to the minus 4. All right, so 1 divided by 3.5, negative 5, and then we're going to subtract 1 divided by 1.206, 10 to the negative fourth. And then I'm going to divide 
uh, 779.15. Um, so I'm getting a T of 26.02, and that would be in minutes. Um, it says calculate the half-life of the reaction. Remember, half-life is, so at T one-half your A equal to one-half of your A naught. Um, so which would be um, 0.5 times 1.206 e negative 4. Um, so that's going to be 0.000603. So we would just plug that in. 1 over 0.000603. That's going to equal 779.15 plus or t times t. 1 over 1.206 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, and so 1 divided by 0.603 minus 1 divided by 6, 10 to the negative fourth, and then divide by 779.15. So I'm getting our half-life is 10.6 minutes on there. So here, it says an additional experiment was performed to determine the value of the rate constant for this reaction. Okay, it's determined that the uh, reaction had a rate constant, so that's a K, and then here is the T that went with it. Now let's look, what did we have up here before? Um, this one, it said the reaction was carried out at 25 degrees Celsius, and we found our rate constant was 779.15. So we had a second set of data at 25 degrees C, the K was 779.15. Okay, and so what wants to know the activation energy. So again, we could um, plug that into there, into our thing. So let's just, and let's actually, let's just do that. Um, Go to our apps, because um, I'm not a big fan of memorizing equations if you don't have to. You got two data points. We can answer this question using the graphing calculator. So I have, we're going to put um, my temperature in um, C1. So temperature is going to go in C1, and then my K is going to go in C2. And I'm just going to have two data points. So my temperature, again, these are um, Celsius, but that's all right because we can let the calculator do the work for us. And then 35, get rid of that one, and then go up. And so at 25, it was 779.15, and at um, 35, it is 1.15, um, 10 to the fourth. And one of the things to think about with this particular problem is that nearly everything or a good bit of the stuff that we've done in this kinetics unit is used in this, this one multi-step problem. Um, so this will be a really good one to study for the test. So what is the activation energy for this reaction? So we're going to plot, um, go to symbolic view, and I want to plot... Um, in here, I want 1 over my t Kelvin temperature, so 1 divided by, and I want temperatures in C1, so we're going to do C1 plus 273.15. Okay, and then we want to plot here, we want to plot the natural log of K, which our K values are in C2, so natural log of alpha. C2. Okay, and then we're going to do plot. Oops, uh oh, what did I do? Let's go back. Okay, so I think my symbolic is all right. I must have something in my numbers. Oh, all right, even though 
oh, I know what it was. Go back. And because I had, I was plotting multiple things, so it cared that C3 had an extra data point in it, even though I'm not using it, but I had it, I had it checked. And so it was going to try to plot that. So now there's our plot. And if I go back to my symbolic view, go down to the equation. So remember slope is negative EA over R. So my slope is negative 24,731.8 minus EA over 8.314. And so go back to my function. And so 24,731.8 times 0.314. And so I'm getting that my EA is 205,620 joules. And then here, y is natural log of k. My temperature, my x is 1 over the Kelvin temperature. So here's one where we're going to use the solver. So we've got to go back, to grab our equation from the symbolic view, and shift view to copy. Then we're going to the solver app and shift menu to paste. And then we're going to make it into an equation. So alpha 1 is my y and equals and enter. And then, so now I've got that. So now I need to know, I'm going to go back to my function. And um, so 45 plus 273.15. So that's my Kelvin. And 1 divided by that is 0 0.003143. So that's x. And we're going to go back to my solve app to the number view, and I'm given that x is 0 0.003143, enter, and then the y, I'm going to tell it to solve. So that gives me that 11.877 is the natural log of k. That means that k is equal to e, the 11.877, which equals, let's go apps, back to the function app. And we want shift natural log, and then 11.877. And that gives me that K is pretty big, 143,918.